Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, citizens of all ages, welcome back to another informative edition of the Star Citizen Anniversary Sale. So, in the previous couple of videos, we went over Anvil, Aegis, and today we've got the ground vehicles and alien ships. Now, for the ground vehicles and alien ships, I'm not 100% sure exactly what they constitute in uh, this category, but I'm going to make an educated guess and go over uh, all of these things. So, first and foremost, we've got the Cyclones. Uh, the Cyclones are specifically ground vehicles. They cannot be updated to uh, anything other than other ground vehicles. So that would be like the Cyclones, all, what, five or six variants, and uh, the Ursa. So let's just jump right into it. The Cyclone. The baseline model of the Cyclone features an open flatbed in the back where cargo pieces can be safely secured and transported, making it a perfect transport for homesteads or as a short-range vehicle for planetary deliveries. So not a whole lot is known about the Cyclone series, aside from they are buggies. I was going to say little buggies, but they're actually not little. They're like half or two-thirds the size of an Ursa or something like that. And the Ursa is a pretty decent size. So basically, um, this is the, I don't want to say the lowest tier, but for the sake of argument and for lack of a better term, this is the lowest tier of the uh, Cyclone buggies. Basically, um, this would be just your regular run-of-the-mill, no special bells or whistles attached. Um, no confirmation as to whether it has a horn. Uh, I hope it does, because that would be fun. Hopefully we'll be able to edit it and have, like, you know... Um, the Dukes of Hazard horn. Do -do 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 do 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 I think that would be funny. Um, so the regular one goes for I think it's like fifty. Oh, if I can get my get this right. So yeah, the base cyclone is fifty dollars. Um, so if you're looking for a little two-person buggy to get around for whatever reason, the base cyclone is the one for you. Now I'd have to assume that they would hopefully have those packs on sale again that has one of each in there. Uh, if I recall, it was like... Uh, I want to say if you bought... Let's see, one, two, three, four... So yeah, there's five of them, so I think it was like 200 because they're all at least $50. So you save about 55 or so. Um, so yeah, this, I'm not really too certain offhand, but uh, yeah. So let's move on to the next one. So there's the Cyclone TR, the next step up. Designed for militia and security use, the Cyclone TR, which stands for turret, module uh, features upgraded armor and a single human-operated turret capable of mounting a size 1 weapon and a responsive 360-degree field of fire. So... Uh, basically, the only difference between the TR and the base Cyclone is A, it has a turret attached to it and has slightly better uh, armor. Other than that, it's going to be more or less the same thing, um, although you will be foregoing the cargo if you do end up going with the TR module. Now, um, I believe there was speculation that the second person might be able to operate the turret as it is manned in the sense that it would be another person taking control. Although popular opinion seems to be, no, it's not going to be the passenger, it's actually going to be whoever is actually in the back operating the turret. To which in this case, let's see, this uh, picture would be the most apt. So basically this is the turret loadout uh, and how you would use it. Um, if need be. So instead of having somebody in the passenger seat uh, operating, you're going to have to be in the back. And the TR variant goes for $55. Next up, Cyclone RC. For those who like to push the limits of speed, the Cyclone RC stands for Racer. 
features a modified intake system to allow for controlled bursts of speed, as well as tools to customize handling. Now that last part, tools to customize handling. Um, I'd have to go out on a limb and suggest or and guess that maybe it would have to do with the fanned wheels, uh, the way that those little fins pop out and give you a little bit better traction. Uh, I do recall hearing something along the lines of having an intake that helps you to recharge um, the thrusters, a la some of the racing variants. You'll have like that extra scoop in there, uh, so that way your thrusters recharge a bit faster. Now the RC is also fifty-five dollars. Next, the Cyclone RN. Stay mobile in a rare, uh, a rare, yeah, or yeah, stay rare. Stay mobile and aware with the Cyclone RN, which stands for Recon. This light reconnaissance vehicle is the perfect solution for scouting runs, providing fast and detailed scans of terrain, as well as beacon placement. So that's interesting. I don't remember seeing that in the description previously. So with the reconnaissance variant, that's basically alluding that you'll be able to place beacons down on uh, planet and moon surfaces. Now, if these beacons are going to serve like the... Uh, beacons that they have in space that allow you to warp to them is uh, has not been confirmed. Uh, the reconnaissance one, I do believe, if I recall, is supposed to have a slightly lower signature in terms of IR and heat, uh, though I do not have any actual numbers or figures on to what allotment that'll be. The RN is also $55. Next up, and one of the more contentious variants, the Cyclone AA. A battlefield equalizer, uh, equalizer, the Cyclone AA, which stands for Alcoholics Anonymous. No, <laughs> no it stands for anti-air. Uh, comes equipped with a surface-to-air missile and countermeasures packaged to provide cover for ground troops against airborne attacks. So now... This has been pretty contentious because, to my recollection, during one of the QAs, it was stated that this would have, I think, one or two size one missiles. And everybody was like, um, what? And this is anti-air? That's nothing. And they even used this picture as an example and was like, yo, even if you shot two or three size ones at a saber and they all hit that saber would really be fine um in fact if anything you'd probably just piss off the pilot and give yourself away um so hopefully those are not going to be size ones um me and some of my org mates were saying you know they got to be at least size two and you got to have more than two because really even two direct hits with size twos you could still be Pretty combat effective. In fact, let's see if it actually even says. So two missiles, size two, and um, let's see, two size two. Yeah, so it looks like you're going to have um, possibly two. Not a hundred percent sure. But again, only size twos, that does not seem uh, as though it'll be very good. Although, seeing this now, having an EMP device, that could be interesting. Uh, having an EMP device on an anti-air, that, that could actually ruin some people's days. That I could see being actually somewhat useful. And the AA module is 70 now, see, that's why it was quite contentious, because for only a couple of size 2s, or at the time, size 1s, uh, that seemed goddamn ridiculous. Absolutely goddamn ridiculous. Now, uh, we're going to move on to the alien ships. Now, by alien ships, I would have to assume it's going to be the car to all the Nox, and um, 
possibly the Van Duel ships. So let's start with these first. Now it's not confirmed whether the Van Duel ships will be sold. However, given that they're alien, uh, I'm going to go over it anyway. Um, it's it's less likely that it'll be there, so don't get your hopes up. Especially the fact that the glaive is not in here. I know the glaive was like super limited, so I'm gonna forego it, given the fact that it's not even in here. So let's start with the car to all. The Xi'an Iopa Corporation manufactures an export model of the car to the car to all <laughs> for sale to human civilians. The export model features the same Xi'an maneuvering rig, but control surface is modified for human use and a more limited armament. Now that couldn't, is an understatement. More limited armament. Now from my understanding, if I recall, it's got two size threes, but they are just the M5A lasers. Now in my opinion, that's a really weird weapon to put on an alien ship. Um, this, I can say I've flown one and for what you get, I feel like this thing is way less durable than it should be, especially for alien technology. Um, it has a really cool look. It's really neat the way that it, you know, um, does that Transformers thing where it goes from this while landing and then it does that little like shift and it looks like this configuration once it's flying. Uh, the interior is really neat. It does have a different quantum jump uh, visual effect to it, which definitely adds to it. However, in my opinion, for what you get, it could be better. Um, I'm hoping with the advent of 3.0, this will have a little bit more strength to it have a little bit better shielding and if I recall I think this actually doesn't have uh, side shielding only front and rear so that further opens it up to attacks where it can be severely damaged from the sides now from what I recall I thought the Xi'an car to all was about 160 or 170 170 so if you were looking to pick yourself up a car to all if you've flown it and you liked it, 170 is the price that you want to save up to. Now we move on to the Nox. Uh, now, I'm not sure if the Nox would be considered a ground vehicle, but it is most certainly alien, so I feel comfortable putting it into this category. Hit the skids with the 2947 Nox. This speedy, maneuverable, open canopy racer from Aopa is capable of zipping along planet surfaces or deep space. Available for the first time in human space, the Nox has been specifically redesigned for human pilots. So grab your ship and head to the racetrack today. Now, the Nox is currently the fastest from concept to tangible asset creation so far. Uh, this went on concept in 2017, like early 2017, uh, May or so. And here we are in November and it's already in 3.0 and almost completely flyable. Now, there's still some odd physics bugs with it, but that's damn fast. Um, Usually it takes them at least a year before they get a working idea, let alone a model in-game flying around. Um, this is supposed to be quite speedy, from my understanding. Um, and the way that the canopy kind of hugs the racer, or the rider, is kind of neat. You have like this little spine that goes up, gives you some partial protection, these leg area... Um, Bracers, I guess you could call them, also come up, give you slight ground protection from the legs, for the legs. Um, and personally, I'm actually a really big fan of the Nox. I really dig it. It's got like um, like a real you know racer uh, kind of a speeder bike look to it, and I dig it. Um, this is obviously the Nox Black, and the Nox I think is going to be for like around 40, if I recall. Let me see. Correct, yep. So the Nox Black is 40. 
Now, going right from the Nox Black, go to the Nox Q. If I'm not mistaken, the Nox Q is supposed to be the special one. Uh, I don't know if this will be on sale or not. It'll probably just be the Blacks, but to cover all bases, let's talk about the Q. Deriving its name from the Xi'an word for thrust, the Nox Q delivers that and more. <clears throat> this limited version of the Open Canopy Racer features a stunning brushed silver finish and was specifically created to celebrate the inaugural sale of the first Nox for human riders. So, <clears throat> I think it's going to be less likely that the Nox Q will be for sale just openly. Um, but really, from my understanding, the only difference between the Q and the black is really just the paint. I don't think that the Q actually has any sort of updated stats. Um, I don't believe it goes any faster or recharges uh, any differently in terms of thrust. Uh, I think it's just shiny and silver. So with that, as you may have saw, the Nox Q also $40 if that does happen to go on sale. The site. Now again, take this with a grain of salt as the, um, they might have a couple of limited scythes that they're looking to sell. Um, it's going to have the five-year insurance, just like all the other ships. But this one is incredibly rare. Uh, when this was originally first sold, I think it went for like three or three fifty, and on the gray market, they're like over a thousand dollars now. And I don't know why. Um, as a subscriber, you get a site. They're not really that that great. So I don't know what all the hubbub is. I mean, yeah, they're alien. They're kind of exotic. Maybe that's the whole allure. But for me, after flying one, yeah. So, fast becoming the symbol of the Van Duel race. The Scythe is the foot soldier in every raid and the target of every human fighter pilot. Featuring a hefty weapons payload, the Scythe's real asset is its maneuverability, found in the twin Myri and 12 maneuvering thrusters. <clears throat> um, so again, this is uh, an exotic ship uh, by the Van Duel. If they do happen to sell it during the anniversary, you can count on it having the 60 months, 6-0, uh, akin to 5 years. And if you don't happen to be able to get your hands on one of these, you're really not missing out on much. Um, if you really, really want to get one, just subscribe. Um, after you subscribe, you get one of these in your hangar, and you can take it out whenever you want. Only cost you between $10 or $20 a month. And you'll um, <clears throat> you'll be able to see what I mean. It's really not not that special in my opinion. Again, it looks cool. That's all well and good. But other than that, it's quite flimsy. And I believe that was like around 300 for the scythe. Yep. So the scythe is originally 300. But again, I would be kind of surprised to see that this be on sale. But with it being limited, who knows? They might. And that's the scythe. Um, now, I thought there was one other alien ship. But I... Oh, well, there's the blade. That's probably what I forgot. The blade. So, again, um, let me see. I knew there was at least one other... One other so the blade is a light fighter. Vandal light fighters, designation blade, are often used as scouts in first wave assault crafts. Over the decades of conflict, they have been increasingly increasingly used to take out comm arrays and early warning systems. They have also served as, uh, well as skirmisher units due to their speed, allowing them to chase down any ships attempting to flee the area. If engaged, expect the blade to try to utilize its speed and agility to wear down your defenses. Now again, the blade is not currently in-game, so there's not a whole lot known about it. Uh, in fact, it looks like this is the only picture, at least for uh, concept. Uh, there are some other images that snuck out back in uh, the great disco leak uh, of 2015. There was like 42 gigs of assets that... Uh, got free due to uh, a certain individual whom shall remain half nameless. Um, <laughs> <clears throat> so, um, 
The blade usually runs for about 250. Uh, yep, in fact, there it is right there, 250. Uh, in fact, now that I think about it, there actually is one other ship, and I'll get to that in just a moment. Uh, in fact, with the blade, we don't even have really any stats on its weapons. Um, power plants, coolers, shield generators, all still to be determined, as well as thrusters and maneuvering thrusters. So I foresee this still being in production for quite a while. Um, again, though, some people really dig the alien aesthetic. If you happen to be one of them, 250 will get you a Blade Light Fighter. Uh, so the other ship I can think of, the Prowler. Now, uh, I always forget about this ship uh, because, again, this this is another one that isn't in, uh, in production. Or, I mean, it's in production, but it's not available. Um, so, let's get into that one. The Prowler. Named after the UPE military designation, the Prowler is a modernized version of the infamous Taveran armored personnel carrier. Asperia's astro-engineers were given unmitigated access to study original versions of the ship recently discovered in the Cabal system to help meticulously reconstruct the vehicle. Now, the Prowler is the perfect fusion of two cultures, the elegance and effectiveness of the Taveran war machine, combined with the reliability of modern human technology. Now, the Taveran Prowler is supposed to be like a stealth boarding ship. Um, the way that this ship has been touted is it's the kind of ship that's able to go in <clears throat> under the radar, literally, uh, attached to the sides of the ships, I think with these like blade-like apertures. And as you can see, the side doors here allow for quick troop deployment, whether that be human or otherwise. Uh, the Prowler, I think, is up there in price, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, it's not that high, so that's good. Let's see. Prowler. Yeah, okay. 425 for the Prowler. Um, now, for its size, it looks a little bit small, but again, those stealth capabilities, depending on if you're the type to utilize them properly, this could be an invaluable addition uh, to your fleet, especially if you're going to be more on the pirate side, if you're going to be more of the stealth type where, you know, sneakiness is your best weapon, you might want to look into the Prowler. Uh, again, not a whole lot is known about it, which is a little bit of a detriment. Um, but again, the um, the it, it has a lot of potential. Now, I just want to go through and make sure there's not an alien ship that I'm forgetting, because I do believe that. Oh, actually, you know what? I forgot to do the Ursa. Shame on me. There I was talking about it at the beginning, and I almost completely forgot. So, the Ursa Rover. RSI is proud to unveil the Ursa Rover. Based on a rapid deployment vehicle developed for the UEE Marines, the Ursa is a civilian, all-terrain vehicle built for the planetside explorer. Nice, short, sweet, simple to the point. So the Ursa Rover is uh, the vehicle that comes with the Aquila, or the Aquila. Um, it can hold, I believe, uh, two people in the front and about another two to four in the rear. Uh, it can hold cargo. It does have a turreted weapon on there, which I believe are size ones. Yep. So you got two size ones, two bulldog laser repeaters that come up on the turret mount there on the side. Um, if you have an Aquila or Aquila, however you want to pronounce it, you already have one of these coming to you. Um, if you've got like an Andromeda or a Taurus or let's say even just a Starfarer and you don't have a Rover, you might want to think about picking one of these up. Uh, they're only $50. Let's scroll all the way up. There we go, Ursa Rover, 50 bucks. And it is a great addition to your fleet, especially if you are planning on spending time planet side, which, let's be honest, with 3.0 coming, who isn't going to be spending time planet side? Uh, the Ursa Rover, I think, would be a great addition to anybody's fleet with a vehicle that can hold it. Um, you know, obviously, 
it might be uh, not the best to buy this if you don't have a ship to put it in. Although, you may not be at a huge disadvantage, as if I recall, they did say that on planets, they are planning on having garages. So if you do have a ground vehicle, any ground vehicle, you will be able to call them in via the garages that are on um, uh, planet side or moon side or whatever you want to call it. So you will still be able to get use uh, out of it. You don't have to bring it to certain areas or to all areas. Certain areas you very well may. Uh, let's see. Any other alien ships that I missed? Aha! Uh -huh. Yes, the Defender and the Merchantman. I knew it. I'd have to assume that's what they would be in. So let's start with the Defender. <clears throat> Meet the Banu Defender, a multi-crew fighter whose patchwork design highlights technology from a variety of species. Though cargo space is limited, the Defender features modest accommodations for its crew and provides easy access to components. The Defender gets its name from the role it serves, first line of defense against enemy attacks. That's why the Defender makes the ideal companion to the merchantman, one to do the heavy hauling and the other to perform the deadly dogfighting. Every Banu merchant knows an investment in defense is an investment in their livelihood. So the Banu Defender, a.k.a. the Crab Fighter, um, <laughs> this thing looks like, like an aggressive crab to me. I mean, like, look at, just, just look at that silhouette. That looks like a crab. Um, definitely has a very interesting look. Um, to be honest, I personally am not a fan of these big-ass arms uh, blocking your side views, uh, as this is cockpit and this is a cockpit. And having these giant appendages in the way, I feel, is going to be just that in the way. Now, again, we don't have this in-universe yet, so this is subject to change. Maybe the cockpits will go up higher and the arms will go down lower or something like that. But in the current configuration, and with the way that these arms look, it, it seems like that's going to be a bigger detriment than any sort of help. Um, me personally, I do have a merchantman, and I am I would rather have some Super Hornets or Sabres on my six uh, than one of these. Um, for the weapons, it looks like it's going to have some... Uh, cannons. I'm guessing these are probably Banu weapons. Yeah, it says right there. Banu. So again, we don't have any Banu weapons in game currently, so really it's all speculation as to how this will perform. Now, if I recall, I think the Defender is going to be like around $170, $180. Let me just double check. One eighty-five. Okay, so the Defender is actually one eighty-five. Uh, so again, if you're into the alien ship thing, and maybe you're not into some of the other ships that I've shown so far, Banner Defender might be your thing. But again, expect to have a, a slightly blocked view. Speaking of Banu, the Merchant Man. Oh, the. The one, the only, the myth, the legend, the merchant man. Banu traders, uh, traders are renowned for their merchant prowess, traveling the space lanes and trading with everyone from humans to the Van Duel. Their sturdy, dedicated trading ships are prized beyond all other transports, sometimes passing from generation to generation of Banu. Now, this is a fucking ship. Well, let me just say that right outright. There are very few concept images of this thing, but this is supposedly going to be the interior looking into the cargo area. Um, so this is going to be the boardroom where you basically make your deals. And I mean, just look how ornate and beautiful that looks. Uh, the Banu, man, Banu Merchantman is going to be huge. Um, so it's got a size 6 max. One weapon per mount. There's three mounts. So that's three size 6 weapons. Potentially size 5 gimbaled. Uh, this thing is not fucking around. Um, it's also got a couple of turrets on there. Some size 5 turrets. Again, not fucking around. Now, this thing has an immense amount 
of uh, cargo, from what I recall. They might have changed it since then, but I do recall that this thing having a lot of cargo space. You want to be a trader, you want to do cargo, you want to be a slaver, this is your ship. Uh, there's also rumors that you'll be able to set up a storefront in this ship, you know, a la Ultima Online. Uh, so you'd literally be able to go planet to planet, getting and collecting wares and selling them right out of the ship. You don't even have to really do anything. You plop down, put your open sign on, and let the cash roll in. Simple as that. Uh, if you're looking to do trading and cargo, I highly suggest the, looking into the Merchantman as this is going to be one of the cooler ships out there, especially if you're into aliens, especially if you're into something different, the Merchantman may be for you. Now the only thing is it is a $350 ship. It's had quite a couple of price increases. Um, luckily, I was able to get it way earlier before it jumped up this high. Um, but even at this price, this is a ship to look into. Um, this thing is gorgeous. That's all I'm going to say. Um, just from the, the couple of pictures that I've seen, this is going to be an immense thing of beauty. Um, now, with that, I am fairly certain that is all the alien ships and ground vehicles. Uh, so... Ending it with the Merchantman, I think, is very apt, as this is the type of ship that is hard to forget. And you know what they say, when people study or when they watch something, the, the two things they remember are the beginning and the end. So I think this is a perfect place to stop this video now. Thank you very much for watching. If you like this video, leave a like down below. It lets me know that you're actually enjoying this stuff. If you want to see more, leave a comment. Um, hell, if you just got things to talk about. Let's talk down below. Uh, I always jump back and look at comments. I love the conversations. I love, uh, you know, just how dedicated everybody is. And most of all, I just love this community. So all you beautiful bastards out there, have a wonderful day. This has been Will. Peace.